Mohilal Oswal S&P BSE Enhanced Value Index Fund. What kind of return potential or risk potential this fund, this NFO can add to your portfolio? Can we analyze and evaluate? Hi, this is Ramalingam from holisticinvestment.in. We help individual investors like you to take right financial and investment decision. Before we dive deep into the analysis part, first we will understand some key features of this particular NFO and then we analyze this S&P BSE Enhanced Value Index, which is the benchmark index and based on that they are going to do. And then let us analyze this particular NFO. This NFO is open till 5th August 2022. This is an open-ended equity fund coming under index fund category. Benchmark index is BSE Enhanced Value Index. Minimum investment is just 500 rupees. If you are withdrawing before 15 days, there is an exit load of percentage. If you withdraw after 15 days, there is no exit load. The investment objective of this fund is very simple. This fund will simply copycat the BSE Enhanced Value Index index stock, stocks. Whatever the stocks that are in the index, they will buy. In the same ratio, they will buy. With the help of that particular portfolio, they will create long-term wealth subject to the expense ratio and the tracking. Now, uh, let us understand this particular index in detail. This particular index is constructed by selecting top 30 stocks from the S&P BSE large mid-cap index. How they will choose the top 30 stocks using value score, value investment philosophy based scores. What are all the observable data they will use? TB ratio, PE ratio, PS ratio. Based on these three ratio observable data, they will pick and choose the top 30 companies. That will be constructed as S&P BSE Enhanced Value Index. Remember, this BSC Enhanced Value Index is a factor-based in indexing method. Right? Uh, instead of a human intervention, they use few observable data like PE ratio, BB ratio, PS ratio, like that. Based on that, they will select stocks. So this is factor-based investing. Factor-based investing uses observable data. Right? Because you are adding few factors and shortlisting you know, like stocks, the, the other factors can be quality, momentum, or, or the other factors like uh, uh, simple value instead of enhanced value. Right? Uh, they, these, based on these factors, the investments can be considered. When you add new factors to your portfolio management, your risk adjusted return in theory is supposed to go up. This is a few simple background about factor based investing. Uh, this index has got top 10 stocks as NTPC, Indian Oil, Bharat Petroleum, Gale, Vedanta, ONGC, Tata Steel, Coal India, Italco, Bank of Baroda. This itself constitutes to 56% of the portfolio. Right? There is a concentration here. And again, top five sectors or this particular index as of now has got only five sectors, energy, financial services, commodities, utilities, and consumer discretionary. Uh, utilities and consumer discretionary itself amounts only to 10%. So balance three sectors amounts to 90%. Again, here there is a concentration risk. Concentration can be riskier most of the times, right? And this fund has delivered a reasonably good return in the, in the short run as well as in the long run. Being an equity fund, I would suggest you to have a time frame of seven years plus. What are all the positive factors for this fund? When we did our in-depth detail analysis, we had a few positive observations. That is what I'm going to list first. Value tends to outperform when the market is recovering from a bad phase. 
So from bear phase, immediately value stocks tend to recover compared to growth oriented momentum stocks. Then now, this fund will have definitely lower risk ratio compared to an actively managed portfolio. Because in the actively managed fund, the fund manager will do in-depth detailed analysis on each and every stock. So obviously fund management expenses will be higher than here, as I told you earlier, the fund manager is going to do simply cut, copy, paste of the benchmark index. So he is not going to do any analysis. So obviously fund management expenses will be lower when you have less expense ratio that will result in better post expense return. This can, this fund has a potential to systematically add value stocks and remove relatively non-performing stocks based on predefined criteria, based on predefined observable data. Without human intervention, we are able to do it. This fund is free from fund manager bias. What is fund manager bias? The other name for fund manager bias is stock selection risk. Normally, only in the actively managed fund, the fund manager will pick and choose the best stocks based on his analysis. So if his analysis goes wrong, there's a probability in theory, the fund manager can underperform the benchmark index. Whereas here, the fund manager is not going to do any analysis. He is going to simply buy the entire index. So there is no stock selection risk. There is no fund manager bias. Adding factors like uh, value or enhanced value or quality or momentum uh, helps improve risk adjusted returns. So this index is definitely a good way to take advantage of market recovery. If you foresee market recovery, then this fund can deliver much better return. We have listed all the positive factors. Also, when we did our analysis, we also came across few important negative factors, which can create a negative impact to investors' portfolio. That I'm going to discuss now. As this is an equity fund, definitely riskier for short-term investors. If you've got short-term money or you've got short-term goal, please avoid this fund. Being a factor-based investing fund that also has got a concentrated portfolio, this fund is not suitable for your core portfolio. Maybe a broad-based fund or a well-diversified equity fund is suitable. Being an index fund obviously will not be able to beat the index or market. Uh, actively managed fund has got a higher potential and probability to beat the index because there the fund manager will pick and choose the best of the best stocks based on his analysis. Being an index fund, it will have tracking error and expense ratio because of that it can perform its own index. If you are expecting dynamic fund management, then it is not possible here. Uh, switching actively from large cap to mid cap, mid cap to large cap based on the outlook. Also based on uh, like uh, outlook moving from momentum stocks to defensive stocks, defensive stocks to momentum stocks, or based on outlook moving from one sector to other sector. These kind of dynamic fund management is not possible here because the fund manager is going to simply mimic and replicate the index. Even if the fund manager knows this particular stock has a very bad negative outlook or this particular sector has got bad negative outlook, but the index has exposure in that particular stock or index has got exposure to that you know, like negative outlook uh, sector, then he is forced to replicate and mimic the index and give exposure to those stocks or those sectors. Being a value fund, it may take longer time to unlock the value. So as an investor, you may have to wait in this equity fund for a longer time. Right? In a normal equity fund, it may take five to seven years time. Being a value fund, it can take more than seven years time also to get a reasonable good return. Uh, top 10 stocks and the top three sectors has got a higher concentration. So better to like, uh, understand this risk here. Concentration can bring more risk or can bring more return also. So that way, be aware of the concentration risk. This fund will never do any analysis on the underlying stock. Fund manager will not 
look at the profitability of the particular stock or balance sheet of this particular stock. I will not look at the sustainability. I will not look at uh, whether the particular company or sector is easy to disrupt or not. He will not give any weightage. Whereas in the actively managed fund, the fund manager will analyze the underlying stock, each and every stock. He will choose the best stock based on different parameters, capital efficiency, competitive edge, value proposition, uh, long-term sustainability, uh, uh, what kind of uh, vision management has got, quality of the management. So uh, based on these things, when a fund manager picks and chooses best of the best stocks, then they have higher potential to outperform the benchmark index. Why we go to a mutual fund instead of like we directly invest in stocks because we don't know how to select stocks or we don't have time. That is why we pay expense ratio and go to a mutual fund. But even after paying expense ratio, here fund manager is not doing any analysis. The fund manager's potential is not fully used in any index fund. Active funds fully use the potential of the fund manager. So we have listed down all the negative observation of this Motilal Oswal S&P BSE Enhanced Value Index Fund NFO. Now is the time to decide whether this is a good fund or a bad. Good or bad. Right. First time investors and conservative investors should avoid this fund because it is not a broad-based fund, not a well-diversified fund. This is a concentrated fund. And also factor-based investing is slightly more riskier than a broad-based index. Long-term investments in actively managed portfolio has got the better potential to deliver higher returns. If you are looking for market beating return or dynamic fund management, again, you should avoid this fund. Before selecting these kind of funds, better to consult your financial planner because your financial planner only knows your overall financial roadmap and what are all the major milestones you have got like buying property, kids education, your retirement, like that he has got all the milestones in your financial roadmap. So he will be able to tell you based on your investment objective this fund is suitable or not. Based on your risk appetite and risk profile this fund is suitable or not. Also, when before investing in any of these funds, please check with your financial planner and ask him one particular specific report. What is the overlap ratio? When you are adding a new fund, you already have an existing mutual fund portfolio and direct equity portfolio. Because you are adding a new fund to your portfolio, this new fund is going to add new stocks to your overall portfolio or going to overlap the existing stocks in the portfolio. This overlap or unique stock addition is going to benefit your overall uh, portfolio or not. Get this report before deciding. That is why I always suggest you to consult your financial planner before making these kind of investment decisions. Hope this 360 degree analysis on Motilal Oswal S&P BSC enhanced to value index fund and hope we could have given uh, right kind of aid in deciding. If you have any further questions on this NFO or any other investment option or anything related to achieving your financial goals, feel free to book a free appointment with our certified financial planner. To book a free appointment with our certified financial planner, I have given a separate link below this video in the description. I have also given one more link below this video in the description, which is basically a webinar registration link. We regularly organize insightful investment webinars with eminent investment experts. They share huge wealth of wisdom on investment techniques and wealth creation techniques, strategies. By participating in these webinars for free, you can learn tested and proven and easy to implement wealth creation techniques and investment strategies. So if you want to participate in these webinars for free, just register there, leave your name and email ID. I'll book the seat for the next webinar and send you the invite for the next webinar. Hope this video helped you. I'll again meet you in another helpful video.
Thank you. Bye-bye.